major groups. The, the interesting thing about plants is that, you know, you go outside and you see all these trees and all these plants everywhere. And uh, it's a little intimidating, all these names and different plants and stuff, but really they can be, they're grouped. You can, and once you understand these groups, you can put all, all of this stuff starts to make sense. So, um, do you guys know, the very primitive plants were the moss, are like mosses. And uh, mosses, uh, you know, are very small. And um, they have to be near water. Yeah. They can't see that. Oh, you guys can't see that? Scoop forward. Okay. Scoop forward. Or here. Here. Oh, you can do it here. That's blocking. Okay. So, uh, mosses are very small. Mosses. Mosses, right? The mosses, have you guys know what a moss looks like? It's a very finely dissected, tiny plant that lives near water. You don't see them in dry areas. And the reason we see them near um, uh, water is because they don't have a vascular system. You guys know what a vascular system is? The plumbing. We have our veins and arteries are a vascular system, and, and plants have also have a vascular system made up of xylem and phloem. Um, they don't have a vascular system. So all the water that gets into that plant has to has to get into the plant by osmosis. So there's no, they can't transport water. So they have to remain small. Also, reproductively, they require water. They have like gametes that have to swim to other parts of the moss. So they need, they need water for reproduction and they need water um, uh, in all to cover their entire body because they don't have uh, a vascular system. Now the next sort of improvement from the mosses was um, like ferns. Now the ferns uh, you'll see are um, uh, now have a vascular system and they can get big. They can get bigger. In fact there are tree ferns that are 60 feet high. But they're still restricted to watery areas because they also their gametes have to swim to other to to um, uh, to pollinate, to essentially make seed spores. So they require they require H two O for reproduction, uh, but they have a vascular system, so they can get big. These are will forever be small, and they also need H two O for repro. Okay, now the next innovation after that were, uh, do you, can any of you guys guess? Uh, the gymnosperms, the cone plants. They were just going to say that. Yeah. They were just like conifers. Say yeah, exactly. Conifers. We call them gymnosperms. Now, the great thing about these is they, they invented seeds, so they no longer need water to reproduce. And they have amazing vascular system. So these guys can get huge. Some of the biggest organisms on earth are gymnosperms, like sequoias, they're cone conifers, cone plants. Uh, but the problem is that they rely on uh, random processes to pollinate, to get pollen from a male cone to a female cone. They require, they, it's, they're wind pollinated. And wind pollination is essentially random. You're just of the wind and it picks up your pollen and takes it to, by accident, to a, a, a female cone. The probability of that happening is so high, is so low, excuse me, that conifers have to produce tons and tons and tons of pollen. It gets everywhere. It gets on your car, on the sidewalk, on your cat. Um, <laughs> and that is very wasteful and inefficient. So the next kind of improvement you can, you can move it board too if you want. I can. Well, the next improvement are the angiosperms. The flowering plants. And now the plants are using, they've got a great vascular system, and they're using flowers to encourage pollinators to take the pollen directly from one plant to another. So you don't have to produce tons and tons of pollen to, to uh, 
uh, reproduce. So this is much more efficient. Now within the angiosperms, there's two kinds of angiosperms. There's these things called monocots. Good thing Cots. you're tall. Huh? Good thing you're tall. Cot stands for cotyledon. Have you guys ever heard of a cotyledon? Cotyledon is the first seed leaf. You know, you have a seed like that underground, and then it sprouts. And the first seed leaves are called cotyledons. They're called their seed leaves. And they're different from, than all the seeds that the plant will produce uh, after, after they, these fall off. They're, they're different than all the other seeds, the leaves that the plant produces. And somewhere deep in plant history, uh, there was a bifurcation where you either had two cotyledons and you're a dicot, or you had one cotyledon and you're a monocot. Now that's a sort of gross oversimplification, but everything, your plant books, the herbarium, is all organized by dicots in the front, monocots in the back. Um, so you have, in the angiosperms, you have monocots and you have dicots. Now, in the forest, the plants that you guys are going to be dealing with are either ferns, which you'll be counting, but the overwhelming majority of the trees are these angiosperm dicots, except for one, a very important one, the bald cypress, Taxodium disticum. It's a cone plant. You'll see it has cone plant. It looks like a conifer. But that's the only gymnosperm that you'll be looking at. The rest are all monocot, I mean dicot angiosperms, flowering plants. Okay? Now I have an array of plants that we've collected here. So why don't you guys come over and take a look. This, this one, I'll show you the really important This is um, Taxodium disticum. And you can see that just developing, you can see the cones starting to develop there. You can see the leaves or leaflets are very feathery. And the tree is huge. It's, it's like an emergent tree. So the, the, the forest is very tall, but the Taxodium the bald cypress, the cypress comes out of the top of the canopy. So it's an emergent member of the community. This is the only conifer, the only gymnosperm. Then we have some very important invasive species. Boo! boo. Everybody say boo! Boo! <laughs> boo. Triatica Jerks. sebifera is a Chinese tallow. Jerks. Chinese tallow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, and you can see that its leaf is kind of shaped like a spade. And it sort of quiz quivers like an aspen. Do we have any other uh, invasive and, ones and here? One of the ones that's really nice about this guy is it, it, it'll depend on where we're out there, but when they're really young, they get, they're reddish. The tips are t to be, tend to be quite red pinkish. I mean, you won't see that now, but when, you're, when we're out there in the field, the new, the baby leaves, the baby leaves, the just, just coming out leaves. Unfortunately, that's the only invasive. I'll bring some more next week so you can see um, the other ones. Uh, this is a ubiquitous plant. It's like a shrub. It's a very fast growing plant. It's elderberry, Sambucus canadensis. Elderberry. And you're going to be seeing these a lot. Uh, let me explain to you very just really by a lot he means like thousands yeah it's, it's like um what did we used to call it r r selected oh yeah uh -huh. yeah 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 they reproduce quickly and grow quickly uh, there are two kinds of leaves there's a simple leaf that's like what you think of when you think of a leaf it's got a little stalk with a mid vein little veins coming out like that and it's um, and it's composed of one blade. Now it can be sawtooth. It could even have lobes in it. But it's still one leaf. That's called a simple leaf. Then the other type of leaf is a compound leaf. There are two kinds. One is a pinnately compound leaf. It's made up of leaflets. 
So this is one leaf, and these are leaflets. Elderberry is like that. And this is called pinnate leaf because pinnate means like feather. And this is what a feather is, essentially, the structure of a feather. There's another kind of compound leaf called palmate leaf compound, where it looks like your palm. And there are some, some examples of this leaf type where we're going, but not many. If you see one, it'll be cool. There's an there's a interesting vine that has a leaf that's palmately compound, but there are a lot of leaves that are pinnately compound. And elderberry is one of them. Take a look at this guy. I don't know if you can see it really. So this whole thing right here, this, the, the stem coming off there and these little leaflets, that's one leaf. This is one leaf. One, two, three, four, five leaflets. Okay? That's a pinnately compound leaf. This is hackberry. It has a very distinctive, it's a big tree, a really big tree. This is like a, sh a shrub almost. It can get kind of big, it can get 10, 15 feet high. But it's a shrub. It doesn't have a central trunk. Shrubs all come out every which way from the bottom. They don't have a central trunk. This hackberry, Celtis litigata, is a big, big tree with a very distinctive bark. It has these warty um, projections, projections on the trunk that, that identify it very clearly. And the leaf is simple. Then you have the dogwoods. These are rare. You're not going to see many of these. But the interesting things about the dogwoods is that they have these leaves in which the veins kind of come up, meet the edge, and then go up. They don't go straight out to the edge. The veins go out and then go up along the edge, curve up along the edge. Check that out. Dogwood. It's not a big tree. Then we have some rare, rare trees. We don't see much of them. Salix nigra. <coughs> Salix is the genus of willows. This is the only willow we'll see. Salix nigra. There's one, at least for now, there's maybe there's two, isn't there two, two or three yeah. of these. They're fun. They produce leaves with all this cotton in them. And, they're, and the, the leaves are very narrow. Ulmus americanus, the American elm, has these very rigid uh, veins coming off. Um, and they're really perpendicular, not perpendicular, but slanted. And the margin of the leaf is toothed. Check that out, American elm. Almus Americana. And of course, you saw the, the cypress, all cypress. Okay, let's move over here. This is another one that's kind of rare. You'll know if you see it. It has a simple leaf. It's prun Prunus Carolinianum, which is, um, I forgot exactly what the common uh, name is. I think it's Carolina cherry, Carolina cherry. And if you break these, smush up the leaves, it smells like Dr. Pepper. <laughs> um, the leaves are simple. And um, they're alternate. And alternate meaning they come out of the stem. Uh, there aren't two leaves coming out of each node. There's one leaf on a node, then the other leaf, then the other leaf on the other side, like this. So this is the stem. This is alternate, alternate leaves. And these are parallel leaves. Those are parallel because they're both coming, there's two leaves coming out of each node. Parallel, alternate. Now these are very, very important trees. How important are these trees? <laughs> they, 
are the trees that usually have the highest density where we're going to be. They're um, Acer nigundo and Acer rubrum. They're in the Sapindaceae, both of them. They're in the same family, and they're closely related, and you can tell that because they have the same genus name, Acer. They're maples. This is red maple, maple, Acer rubrum. Rubrum means red. Acer rubrum, red maple. And it has, usually has these some sort of light underleaf, some fuzz there that shows it white. So that's easy to identify. It looks like a maple leaf. And it's white underneath. And this is Acer nagundo. And the interesting thing about Acer nagundo is it's, it's got a compound leaf. What? Yeah, it's weird. It's crazy. It's as, it's as if you cut out the intervening tissue between these veins here. And you're left with three leaflets. So right, when you guys look at this, you probably think it's one leaf, two leaf, three leaf, right? Right, not, this, is, this is one leaf that they call trifoliate because it has three leaflets. And the seeds are called samaras. They're kind of like a helicopter. Oh. A helicopter. So these are the seeds? Yep. Yeah, those are the seeds. I'm not sure if you're going to see any seeds over there. So Acer, very important genus. Is that uh, black maple in the window? No, Acer Nagundo is what they call. Um, yeah, you you think you could think that, yeah, but it's not. What, what is it called? Uh, box elder. Yeah, box elder. Box B -E. elder. B-E. Box elder. Acer Nagundo is box elder. Acer rubrum is red maple, and then we have the oaks. Oaks are also very important in this ecosystem. There's two major ones. Um, Quercus nigra has, it's called water oak. You'd think it'd be called black oak, but no, it's water oak. And you can, it sort of has a leaf like, kind of like a duck foot. This isn't a super good example of it, but it sort of flares out at the end. Quercus nigra. The family is the Phagaceae. Hey, hey, hey. Phagaceae. <laughs> Um, that was good. <laughs> and then there's Quercus texanum. What is this one? Nettles, Nettles oak. oak. Nettles oak. Quercus texanum. Nettles oak. And Nettles oak is deeply lobed. It has these big lobes and, and little pins at the end of the lobes. Quercus texanum. Nettles oak. Nettles and, oak. And just so you guys know, I mean, if you want to, I would encourage you guys to learn both names, but we'll just use the common names mostly when we're doing our recording. So, you, so um, <laughs> don't feel like you have to know all of them. It'd be great to, but really we'll just use the common names. Yeah, but I'm going to test you on the, on the, <laughs> on the scientific. He's a botanist. <laughs> this is a rare Too species. We're not going to see it really. If you do, alert us immediately. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is a small tree. Cephalanthus occidentalis. It's called a button bush and it has these really cool flowers. These don't look very good here because they're very old and terrible. But um, before I before I do the um, the oaks. Just to be clear, those are terrible. <laughs> oh, so these are all oaks? Oh, these are all oaks. Terrible flowers. Because Quercus. Right. Quercus. Okay. Quercus. Quercus is the genus of oak. Terrible so that's very important in California. If you want to be a biologist in California, you have to know Quercus. Really non-traditional oak leaves. This one. Yeah. Because even that's more similar to like what we have here. Right. That one's an oak, too, though. Yeah, this is, a, this is a very important oak. It's not very common in our... In our woods, it's Quercus virginiana. It's the classic southern oak that they plant in all the parks. And we do get a few of them in our forest. Quercus virginiana. It's live oak. Live oak. Live, live oak. oak. Southern live oak. And they're very beautiful because their branches spread out. It's a gorgeous tree. Um, so we have three oaks. What, what is the family of oak? No, it's no. a genus. Nice. Fagaceae. Nice. Not to be confused with the Fab AC, the 
which are the P's. Which are fabulous. Which are fabulous. The Phagaceae is the, is the oak family. And the genus is what? Quercus. 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 You guys got to get that. Quercus. And there are, we have, <laughs> no, there's, there's Quercus. We have three Quercus. Virginiana, Texana, and Nigra. That's live oak, nettles oak, and water oak. And the water oak sort of looks like a duck foot. That's how you can remember it's water oak. And what's the family of the uh, maples? Sap. Sap and daisy. Sap and daisy. Sap and daisy. usually just seed at the end of Well, you know like maple syrup? Maple syrup uh -huh. is, is essentially sap. <laughs> these are maple, so sap and daisy. I mean, like, so these are. Uh, yes. 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 Yes.